That's it. So important part. So remember to trip, remember to look from behind, and then ask him to do active movements first before you proceed to doing a passive video movement. So it's his right shoulder that you're looking at. Okay? And he's slightly short of the complete flexion arc there. And on this side, he's, he's a little more apprehensive, and although he can, but he's going 160 there, he's going 130 there. And here also he's just lost short of here is going 95 degrees, here is short by 20 degrees. However, his internal chin is probably expected to be completely long because that's his stable range. So after having done that, now I'm going to do the passive window movement. Okay, relax. You must inspire complete confidence in him. Keep an arm here or hand here so that he's not worried. And again, I can see just the last terminal he's resisting me, his arm goes into a shiver and spasm there. But passively he has almost full range of movement. The other important range of movement, anybody can tell me, remind me, what have I not examined him for? Sorry? Exonotion, we did that. Circumduction, I won't do. Unless he's your enemy. Not really. You can, it's adding information. So if you want, this is external rotation and internal rotation, okay? This internal rotation here is restricted by his spine. So what you want to do very carefully without the knowledge is doing external rotation at 90 degrees and internal rotation at 90 degrees. So this is a functional external rotation introduction. This internal rotation is far different than this internal rotation. It is measurable. This is not measurable, okay? You can't say this is 90 degrees. So this internal rotation is mentioned as 160 degrees. 160 degrees abduction, 70 degrees external rotation, and he goes up to D12. So the internal rotation measured from greater tuberosity, SI joint, L5, L2, D12. D12, base of the thumb at D12 is considered normal. And you can't measure that in degrees, but you can measure this. And this is important, this is functional. If your skin with works and is very apprehensive, you put him in the, he forgot to get on the couch. It's okay. You put him on the couch and then examine him in supai, he'll be much more comfortable, less active. So the last thing you want to do in the front of the examiner is provoke a dislocation. That will be very impressive. You just have to walk off and come back next year. So after having done that in the moment of very two things you will always in Virgin under stress forget. And that one is number one circus head. And the reason I came to the opposite shoulder is this is the true circus sign. And you invaginate your two fingers, the thumb and the index, between the abdomen and the head of the tumor. And you classify grade 1, grade 2, grade 3. Grade 1 is a variation of normal. And on this side, any idea why I did opposite side and not this side first? <laughs> yes, but why left? I should have started the right. <laughs> you want to know? So, now since you put your mouth with money where your mouth is, Tell me laxity and instability. Are they the same? Can I use them mutually? Or are they mutually exclusive? Not Okay. So laxity is physiologic. You could have take three circuits and not have a dislocation. It is still normal. It's not an indication for Dr. Babulkar to operate you. But painful laxity is instability. And that's a very simple definition, and that's critical for you to understand. So if you have a painful laxity, then that needs to be treated. But if you have a painless laxity, if part of its physiology don't change it, you will make him worse. So that's why that's the true laxity on the opposite side. And then here, it's never going to be true because it's always going to be apprehensive. He will never give. So there's a little bit of guarding all the time. Unless I do this test. Under anesthesia, before that, <coughs> and that's also critical. So the real evaluation of the drawer test and sign and the laxity and surface sign are made under anesthesia. So every surgeon works his part to do that before he puts the knife on the shoulder. Right? Having done that, then we'll check his drawer test as such. So you can keep him free, get him to relax, lean on this side a little, and then grab his glenoid margin anterior posterior between the index and the thumb, and grab his head of humerus. And I can actually perceive that here the grade one anterior 
and the robot gives. And that's again physiologic. That's how it should be. And uh, so that gives us a fair idea of the direction of activity. Again, much better done under anesthesia. Okay? Having done that then, Yes. Yes. We are coming to that. Those are different tests. This is a pure drawer test. So we are just measuring the direction of therapy. The actual test comes now. Right? Okay. So now what we are going to do is the anterior apprehension test. And the best way to do this, we have He's resisting me in big time. And what was the most important part of the test? Looking at the patient's face. Because in the exam, you need to do that and you need to reinforce that to get at your brownie point by looking at the exam, telling him, I'm looking at the patient's face. He understands you put the concept of the athlete's test. They're absolutely futile to do this test and they keep doing it from the same TV test, okay? Because that's no good. So that's the anti test. What I did also, did you understand? Was it done correctly? It was not. So this on the opposite side is the real apprehension test. With my thumb provoking the head to come out of the clean right? But this side is very stable on this side, so he's, he's not clean. The reason you start with 30 degrees, why would I do that in 30 degrees? 30 to 40. So that's what is the mid-range apprehension test. And this is the new bunny on the road because the mid-range apprehension suggests that he has a glenoid bone loss. And that is when they will be apprehensive at this low level. Whereas the true pancreas, where the glenoid is unaffected, is going to be apprehensive in this way. But I suspected that because on its history, if you have seen, it is over 10 years back. There is a lot of microinstability that has been happening over the 10 years. And any other clue that I got from its history? It's a trivial injury. Spot on, she got it absolutely right. So it requires a great amount of violence to remove the head from the shoulder and get them out. It took very trivial episodes to divorce that head from the clean in the three years. Which suggests that there has been an incremental damage in the shoulder over the injury. The moment you know that, the last thing you want to do is do this, you just pop out. And you won't let you do that for some reason. It's important to get inspired confidence in the vision. So having done that, this is the anterior apprehension mid-range institute test. This becomes the actual anterior <coughs> apprehension test, okay? As you suggested, the posterior apprehension is exactly in the opposite direction. And you do it in this manner. And then keep looking at the patient. So you're doing this adduction, internal motion, pushing the head behind. Now that's not a very good test because in 50% of patients, that will be negative for most. So the sensitivity of that test is very poor. The better test for that is a just test is doing this. And that's why you're doing this, when you go into adduction internal motion, the head actually jumps over the posterior glenoid if there's a posterior labrum tear. So this is also called as a Yankees test. J A H N K E. So Yankees describes this as a just test. It's far more reliable than the posterior apprehension. These are the few specialist tests that you would do. And some, to summarize them, the sulcus, the anterior apprehension, sorry, the sulcus, anterior apprehension, the posterior apprehension, and the just test. Any other test that you would like to do for insertion? The one year you would forget all the time. So often we forget that instability can be multidirectional, can be native to the patient because he was born loose, not strong loose. So always do the Baton test. So the Baton score is a score described by a rheumatologist Baton to measure inherent laxity in the patient. So it's a score of nine, won't go too much into detail. You check for hyperflexion of the thumb, hyperextension of all the MCP joints, hyperextension of both ear holes, hyperextension of both the knees. So you get one score for each side, so that's four plus four becomes eight. And then he bends down, and if he can touch the floor with his palm, then that's nine out of nine. And that's anything, seven, eight, nine out of nine, is considered ligament. So please do that, so I ruled out a multidirectional component of it. After having done all this, you need to assess the rotator cuff greater to one to rule out an associate cuff there, especially if he is above 40, or to rule out an inherent suture cuff in neuropathy that doesn't happen. So you hold it here, keep it straight, and then you start at the anti cancer for suture cancer, and the full cancer for suture cancer. 
for the care, keep your bowel care, push out, and that's the good test for intracytal external rotation. But the better that this is again gravity in this position without elevating the elbow, you ask him to lift his arm up and he will be slightly weaker there. So that your intracytal test is this is getting minor. And then finally, the O'Brien, we hold it in adduction, forward flexion, elbow locked in extension, and then stabilize the scapula and then lift him up. And that is O'Brien. Okay? So, O'Brien positive doesn't have so much to do with pain, but you should drop his arm provided you stabilize the scapula. And if you drop it, the O'Brien test is rather non specific, generic, and you must use it like the trend line. Test. So, there are a number of conditions that can cause O'Brien to be positive. Just because O'Brien doesn't mean he has a flat pair or a line of So, like in the hip, if you have a shortened neck of femur, if you have a weak abductor, if you have arthritis, then it will be positive. Number of conditions called O'Brien will be positive, but it adds to it. So, if number of things are positive, like he has a sulcus positive, like he has an anti arthritis positive, like he has a midrange positive, like he has a terminal distribution movement, and his O'Brien positive, he is a highly likely candidate of a student. Of course, you want to finish off AC joint tenderness just to complete, and these are going to be negative. Cross adduction test for AC joint. Biceps, you feel for the biceps here in the groove and you rotate the arm, and that's the locus and the biceps. You can do the speech test by resisting supination, which he will not supination. Or you can do the speech test, which is called flexion, keep the elbow straight and lift the arm. If he mentions pain in the line, then that speech test possible. But that's just to complete the entire. There are thousands of tests, you don't need any of them. This is as much as you need. Whether you're dealing with a rotator cuff test, an instability patient, if you got biceps, you don't need any more than these tests. You will do your neurovascular extension because certain the examiners are very fond of that, so ensure that you don't miss out on neurology, you don't miss out on cervical spine, one joint neighbor. Now, <coughs> it's extremely less likely that you will get any kind of product in your exam. But things are changing. And the threshold batch that always becomes victimized. Last two years back, they've had two cases of rotator cuff tears in the Kerala exam for DNA. So just be prepared. Uh, if at all you get a case, it's probably going to be a shoulder distribution, unlikely to have a rotator cuff tear. There's a big chance that you'll get a neglected anterior or a neglected posterior distribution. You miss dislocation, you don't do this perfectly, the examiner will not fault you because they don't expect you. If you miss a neglected anterior and posterior shoulder dislocation, you can get dropped. So be careful on that. So the history evokes everything. This fellow's diagnosis was done purely on history. That gives you everything. Any quick questions that you have? Uh, sir, uh, in the very best, should the elbow fall behind the midline? Yes. Or be so the very best is for the subscapular. There are several tools for the subcap. When you're doing a very best, if my right subscapular is torn, then what is going to happen is so my back daughter is going to form the way for that and elbow goes behind. But if the patient's natural tendency is to do this, then ensure that you are instructed him correctly to keep the plane of the body. Just to aggravate it, should we go to the It's not indicated because it's a complex test and there is a vague um, from rule that the Gerber test will test the inferior value of the subcap and this will test the superior value. No, nine out of ten that the superior value is strong, and that's why this becomes much more pertinent. And sir, can we separate the testing of the infrared sinus and the tetris sinus? Very difficult, but if it's a genuine infrared sinus tear, they might manage this, but they will not manage it. So this is a more relevant test. So we should test them to their elbow. Again, their gravity. Invariably, they will do this. So tell them not to move the elbow. And purely swing the arm, four arms. Right. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you. Wonderful. Ashish uh, should make a video of this and put it on YouTube. It is there, yes. I think. There is a shoulder examination video on it. So, uh, you know, At Sanjay Hospital, it's been recorded. Praveen has recorded it. So, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, then we can show the Praveen and yeah. put it on YouTube. Yes, it is there. And so it's it a much more extensive. Yes, retrieve this. Review yeah. it before your exam. In addition, because the way Ashi does his shoulder examination is simply superb. Yeah. And every time I listen to him, I think I should start doing shoulder. But then again, I leave it.
The entire shoulder exemption manual is there on my website. You can download it for free. We'll start cutting it next year, so feel free to download it. <laughs> so we'll move on to uh, the two solvers of hand surgery. And I would first like to thank Sudhir. He has come all the way from Mumbai just because of his love for Steve Rosha as well as he loves to teach students and he loves to communicate. So I think we'll hand over to Sudhir and Adil. So what we are doing is we are combining those short cases